Bio Lexicon, spoon feeding the fish has nothing to do with using a spoon type lure. I use the term to describe a presentation that puts the lure right in front of the fish, or where I imagine the fish to be anyway, and keeps it there until the fish finds it too tempting to ignore. In some cases, spoon feeding is all about vertical fishing, but in this instance, I'm talking about using the current to position a lure, in this case a jig and plastic minnow style bait, in a specific spot and keeping it there. It requires balancing the bulk and weight of the lure, as well as the line diameter, against the speed of the current and the depth of the water. It can really come into play when fish are using the eddies created by current breaking objects or rubble to hold in place with a good view upstream while waiting for the current to bring them their next meal. I envision my presentation as representing a bait fish struggling a bit to not get washed downstream. The how-to details are simple. First, get your boat stationary. That used to involve an anchor, but this technique is what drove me to install an electric motor with spot lock as soon as Minn Kota released the first one back in 2009. Every trolling motor I've owned since has had the feature, and I really couldn't imagine fishing without it anymore. Position your boat a comfortable cast length upstream of the area you believe the fish to be holding in and start experimenting with the weight and bulk of the lure versus the current speed and line diameter. As a general rule, the shallower and or narrower sections of a river flow faster than the wider, deeper stretches. Eventually, you'll develop a feel for it and have a good idea of what you need size and weight-wise to get the bait where you want it and keep it there in the current. What you're looking for is a bait that will sink slowly to the bottom when cast downstream and almost hang in the water column when you give it a short pull with the rod tip. As far as the bait of choice, you would think that a paddle tail bait would be the odd time choice in this situation. But in my experience, the less effort the lure looks like it's exerting, the more likely it is to get bit. I go with straight or fork tail baits between 4 and 7 inches or so long. The little baits may be fished on 10 pound braid and 3 8 pound heads, while the 7 inchers usually require at least 3 quarter ounce heads and more often 1 ounce. I even carry some ounce and a half heads for particularly strong current or deeper water. The heavier heads call for 20 pound braid and 15 to 17 pound floral leader. 5 inch range baits are right in the middle of those choices as far as the line diameter and jig head weight are concerned.
is working the lure is concerned. Once it reaches bottom, I lift it a bit, then tighten the line and feel it back down to bottom against the pull of the line and turn it. I don't want it to plummet to bottom, but I don't want it to rise in the water column of its own accord either. I usually keep a finger on the line ahead of the reel during my tight line slow descent portion of the action. It really helps me stay in contact with the lure and differentiate between the light tap of a fish hitting it and the feel of the lure reaching the bottom. Eventually, lifting and letting the bait regain bottom contact a few times will move the bait far enough from my target area that it's time to reel in and make another cast. Except for the sinking part, a similar tactic can be used with a deep diving jerkbait when the fish are a little more aggressive. Just remember the whole idea is to get the lure in position where you believe the fish should be holding and keep it there looking like a potential meal as long as possible.